Welcome everyone to our class on investigating the methods and structure of Torah and I would like to call this class a class in understanding Iyun. Iyun is from the word layen and means to from the word iron to look into things instead of just looking at things at, uh, in a superficial way and understanding things superficiality we've read these uh, Svarim by the Ramchal and by Rebus and Confentone to give us the tools to investigate Torah in a more uh, organized fashion. So I would like to give a little introduction for those people who are not aware of the depth of Torah and of how we go about understanding its depth. Recently, um, it actually is this December 1st, last month, the beginning of this month actually, they discovered, some um, archaeologists discovered near the, near the city of David, which is really right outside the Kotel area. They found this unusual stone here and it had strange markings with the, this V up on going down, a V going up, two Vs here with them. And they can't figure out what it was, you know, amazing. They know it's 3,000 years old according to the level that it was found and they just can't decipher it. During Hanukkah time, the, uh, an archaeologist from Haifa, um, revealed another uh, remarkable discovery in the Kosel. They found this little seal written in Aramaic. It says, Dechi la Hashem, pure to Hashem. It was a seal they found in the Kotel area in the bottom that a, what a, a person would uh, pay for Korban and receive this stamped piece of uh, pottery and then go to the Gizbar and he would collect the Corbin and then he would he, uh, he would pay and then he would get this little um, um, a coupon or receipt for paying and then he would go and he, he would get from the Gizbar the Corbin and then they would offer the sacrifice. So this you know was a tremendous revelation because it's the first time they found uh, uh, the uh, evidence of uh, activity of uh, sacrifices on, on uh, Harabias, physical evidence. A few months ago, Google, which is the big search program, uh, put online all the Dead Sea Scrolls. So 2,000 years ago, uh, uh, there was a, a group of Essenes that lived in the desert and they had a large scriptorium with all these um, Sifrei Kodesh and a lot of other things also but, uh, but uh, this was a great discovery in the 50s. Again, to the, to the person who was not involved in Torah, this is an external proof that the Torah is very, very old and there really was something called Eretz Yisrael and there was really was something called uh, Yeshaya the prophet because here we found the physical evidence for it. The reason I bring this up is because Rabbi Zimmer and Shalom used to talk about outsiders and insiders of the Torah. The outsiders are people that don't learn and understand the Torah from, from the inside and they need physical evidence to show that the, the, there really was a Jewish people and uh, there, there really was uh, um, a prophet called Yeshaya and there really was a, a Korbanot offered on the bias. But inside as people who learn Torah have an unbroken record of uh, the history of the Jewish people, the history of the whole world. And uh, for us, it's uh, interesting but really just playful because the, the, the Torah itself and the Tanakh and, and our whole Masara 
bridging these last 2,000 years, um, for us is just a explanation of the of the beauty of the Torah itself, and a clarification and an understanding that this Torah can only come from the Kodesh Baruch Hu. So, the, what people may, may, may not understand, again, I'm talking to maybe outsiders or even certain insiders, is that the Torah exists on levels. Even this text, there's the words on the cloth, which are not, uh, uh, there's no periods, there's no quotation marks. It's really from, it's from Yeshaya. How do we know where to stop the sentences and not? So we have a Masara that puts in, first of all, how to pronounce the words. If we wouldn't even know, as Hillel said, what an olive sounds like, if it wasn't for a Masara or what a bet sounds like. And the, um, the uh, violation, of course, would be have orally, but it physically was put down into the into the text, and then there's the uh, cantillation, which is how the words are um, how the words are said. Since we don't have a period, we're going to have to rely on a to uh, for a, for a pause. Okay, so here, what I'd like to discuss in just a few opening classes um, is how to start with the Torah itself and go through the chain of Torah Shabbat Peh till we can clearly understand the message that a Kodesh Baruch Hu is saying. And we decided we want to pick the we want to pick the the, the uh, issue of metav, that the Torah says that when a person is damaged, we'll investigate that a little more clearly, he has to pay with the best of his land. We're going to investigate that issue. But I would like to, again, explain how, to, um, how the Torah presents its information that every person in every generation will be able to follow the path from the Torah through the Mishnah to the Gemara to the Halacha and understand specifically um, what the Kodesh Baruch Hu wants from us. So I wrote a little introduction here and I'm going to go over it uh, briefly. And my idea, and, and this was my idea, my idea is to show that the Torah is a document which is very condensed and very um, filled with information. Everything from the letters to how they're broken up to how they're, um, um, how the trump, the cantillation is said, is all that information is encoded in the words themselves. And the books that we've been doing really are teaching us the rules of how to uncompress or decompress the information. So, with your uh, permission, so to speak, I, I, I'd like to just read what, what, I, what I wrote here. The, our rabbis taught us that when Kodesh Baruch Hu created the universe, he looked into the Torah and he formed the world. That's the Gemara in the Zohar. His Tekel B'Deraiso, Bora Salomon. He looked into the Torah and he created the world. So that must mean that all the information in creation is somehow found in the Torah, because the Torah is the blueprint of that reality. So the question arises, how could all that information be found in 304,840 letters of the Torah? It's a limited text. It's how could all that information be in, uh, included in there? And the answer is that the Torah is a highly compressed document whose information is encoded by various visual, audio, and intellectual or logical methods. So let's investigate some of these, what I called compression um, analogs, okay, the compression formulas. How does the Torah now in, 
in those limited amount of letters include so much information. So the analogy I'm using is to, in our computer world, we have what's called a, a zip file. What is a zip file? You, you have a computer only understands one and zero. So you have a lot of information that is built from a strings of one and zero. And when you want to transfer that information, you want to figure out a way that you can minimize the amount of room that it takes so that we can transfer from one place to the next. Okay, so one of the things that was done was to, to create these compression or zip files is they take a set of characters, let's say I write AAADDD, -D -D, and I can just reduce it to a formula, 4A and 7D. So then on the other side, I just have, now, since I know this 4As and 7Ds, so then the unzip program will then take the 4A, 7D and make it AAAA uh, -A 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 and DDDD as in 7. Okay, so that's a way of compressing the information, and, and these algorithms are created to do that. Now, when we look at the Sefer Torah, we see this is the raw the raw text of the Sefer Torah itself. We see that the the the, the words are there, even that was a kiddush. But at least the Baruch Hashem, the, the the Torah, each word is separated by a space. But there is no visual clues about the punctuation. There's no periods to end the statement, commas or pauses between ideas, exclamation, quotation marks. We do notice, however, when we look at the physical Torah itself, that there's two types of line breaks. One is called a pesucha, which is said over here. Pesucha means that the, the line is open from the end of the verse to the end of the column. It means it's open. Okay. And the other one is called a stuma, which means that instead of going to the end of the column, there's nine spaces, as seen over here from the word Yeshalem to the word key, okay, in the middle. Now, the Pesucha visually indicates a major change of subject, and the stuma is, the, is a subdivision. So that would be a, like a, uh, a chapter head uh, would be a pesucha. And the stuma is like within one chapter you have um, paragraph marks. Okay. Um, how do we get, so now we at least our ideas we can see are, are, are broken up into major and minor chapters. But how do we get uh, punctuation? So the, the trap or the musical cantillation tells us that information, okay? Uh, and also we have to add the the um, the uh, nikud tells us also how words are pronounced properly. Now, if we look here, for instance, uh, as far as punctuation is concerned, this vertical line over here between the Lamed and the Mem in this picture below is called the Sof Pasuk. Sof Pasuk is a period. The wishbone is uh, under the head here is a snacht or, or that represents a comma. So we see that the the trap or musical cantillation then will tell us how to punctuate properly. But this musical cantillation not only defines punctuation but also encodes the information about the content of the verse, believe it or not, the, the Gro, the Vilna Gain, explains the Shel Shelis, <coughs> which is the longest of all the uh, trap or cantillation, cantillation marks, uh, is an indication of hesitation. So when, in, 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 for instance, when, when um, Yosef was confronted with Patifor's seduction, it says, V'yimaein, that's the longest trap and it means hesitation, okay? So we see that uh, the, the truck tells us even about the, 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 um, the content of the, uh, of the words. But not only do we have uh, visual indication and oral indications of how to understand the, the text, but we have um, um, 
information embedded in the letters themselves. So, for instance, a Sefer Torah, every the, the the letter, the letter, uh, the letter pay, in every Sefer Torah has to have in the negative space a bait. Okay, if it doesn't have that negative space, then the Sefer Torah is puzzle. Okay. Now, pay and bait are plosives. What it means, I'm, I I don't know, but I, I do know that they're both plosives. I mean, in, in the that means they explode out of the mouth. But what the deeper meaning, I don't know. But it's just an example that the the um, the Torah includes within itself visual um, indicators of information. So much so that the Sefer Torah's puzzle doesn't have it. Now, here's the Samach is totally closed. And the Samach represents uh, strength. It's the numerical equivalent, which is another way of expressing information called gamatria, from the word gamma, which is gamma in, in, in Greek is, is, is uh, uh, gamma, and tria means three. So that's the name given for the, the every letter has a, a, um, a, a numerical weight. So here the numerical weight of Samach is 60, and that's why in Tehillim it says, Shishim Giborim Subibet Amita Shal Shlomo. There were 60 mighty men that surrounded the Mita of Shlomo. So the, the letter itself is an indication of its, uh, of its meaning. Now, Chazal teach us that Rabbi Akiva was able to understand information embedded in the Tagim, which are these little crowns in the Sefer Torah. And he was able, able to explain or darsh these Tagim. So, um, the Gemara says that Rabbi Akiva actually darshaned halachas that Moshe Rabbeinu didn't know. And he and Moshe Rabbeinu was a right. Sabas. And until finally right. he heard Rabbi Akiva say, how did you know that it's halach on Moshe Messina, and then he felt better. Right. So the question is, how did he know that if it's a Moshe if, How did he know something that Moshe Rabbeinu didn't know? So what I think the Peshat is, is that because the Torah is, is, the, word, is, is the word of Hashem, and although you can say over a word of Torah, you may not be aware of all the information that's embedded in it, because it's it's much greater than than uh, any human being can know. Even Moshe Rabbeinu only understood the 49th level. So the saying over the Torah or communicating or transferring it includes with it greater things than even the person who is saying it or writing it could possibly understand. Okay. So, just some of the visual sim sim symbols here, the, the, everyone knows here. The Apparel at Sava Rabbi Shekeu Vivhu, when Esav fell on Yaakov's neck, it's, there's these letters on top. Okay? Uh, these, excuse me, these little dots on top. Okay? So, um, Chazal tell us that that means that his his love of Yaakov was insincere. Okay, as if it was broken up by these dots. Now, the an, another method that the Torah uses to to um, to communicate is also the sound of the words. Now, although we just did in in uh, in Melitza Ayahas. But another way, Rashi explains by Yahas, when 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 Kolev tried to calm the nation down, why did he pick the word by Yahas? So Rashi explains, Has sounds on Marapia, sounds like the word Sha, be quiet. Shh. It's, a, it's a word that has within its sound already communicating a word of quiet down and relax. Now, those are all visual and um, audio uh, or, uh, uh, indicators that are built in the Torah itself. But the main um, way that we're going to be handling the Torah and our Eon piece is through the, the logical um, uh, decompression, so to speak, of the words of the Torah. 
and I'll just bring a few examples. I mean, we've we did quite a lot of work on it, but for those of you that are maybe just listening right now, I'll just bring a few examples how information is encoded in and compressed into a few words. Okay, so the the simple the simplest method of encoding of information is called a generalization. When you use the word all, okay, for instance, it says it says. Yom Hashviz Shabbat Lashem Lokecha Lo Sase Kol Malacha. Don't do any work. Your son, your your servant, man, or your animals, etc. Okay. So the word Kol Malacha includes many, many Malachas, and then we have to again decompress that with the Mishnah to find out which things are actually called Malachas. Um, Another form of logical compression is the inference, where I can infer from what's being said what's not said. So the Torah says when it lists, lists all the lists all the animals, zostia tochelu mikola behema she arts. These are the animals that you may eat. So <laughs> I can infer then from what's said that the other animals I can't eat. Okay, that's called encoding information through inference. Now, there's the whole group, and that's really the st we studied in Sefer Gayon and those with the use in Tefunos, there's a whole group of logical ways that information is, com is communicated and also is com communicated in the least amount of words, of words possible. But there's a whole other level of Torah which transmits information through special methods that a Kodesh Baruch Hu handed to Moshe Misenai, like the Shloshis Rei Midos. And th these are the, the, I would say, the main work in decoding the information in the Torah really comes from understanding the Torah system of communicating information. So I give an example here, for instance, of the Gezer Shava. Now, the Gezer Shabbat means that the, the, there's two words mentioned in two different verses, and because the two words are mentioned in two different verses, the information from one verse goes over to the next. For instance, the Gemara wants to, the, the Mishnah says that a, a woman is married with kesev, with, with money, and the Torah does, doesn't say that anywhere. That the uh, the the um, acquisition or the marriage process is done with money, so it learns it from the word kicha found in the verse of marriage ki kach isha sisha when a man marries a woman, and makes then a, a link between that and Avram Avinu, who said nesati kesev hasod kach mimeni, I'm giving he gave to. He bought the field for 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 a burial place for his wife with the word kicha to take. Now, that's called a gezer shava. Now, it's that's something that obviously cannot is not a logical system, meaning that you could not logically say because a word exists in two different places, the information will link and be moved from one place to the next. In Hebrew, we have the word et, for instance, uh, before a direct object in in the Chumash and it's found in Pesukim all over the place, so that would make the Torah one big mishmash if we saw it to move information from one place to the next. So that's a specific Moshe Misenai method that can only be handed down from Moshe all the way down to the chain to the, any generations receiving the Torah. But I bring another very interesting one in the study that we're going to do. Uh, about paying for damages with the best of your, with the best of your uh, land, the the Gemara says that even though the paying for the best of your land is only found when an animal falls into a pit, we're going to extend that law to all forms of damages, and how are we going to do it through four words that the mission the, the Gemara says. Tachas Nasini Yeshalem Kesev. With those four words, that Gezer Shabbat is going to spread the din of 
paying back uh, for a damage that was done, if you're going to pay back with the land, it has to be the best, to 24 different cases of damages. So Rabbeinu Hananel, who was the great Rishon, takes those four words and explains them. So I, I, I made a little diagram so that we can see it. And again, the, the, the idea is to appreciate the depth and the systems that are involved in un or decompressing the information and having it uh, formed into its uh, total true reality. So here, Rabbein Ochanan explains that the, 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 that Tachnas uh, Sinishalam Kesev and how we spread it to the 24. The, the Pasik really was talking about uh, uh, when, when a man's animals beer bestay acher, he um, I made a mistake for it, it wasn't boar, it was um, when a man's animal walks into another field. At the end of the Pasik says, mate of sadeo mate of karmir shalem. The person who did the damage has to pay with the best of his land or the best of his vineyard. So this word Yishalem found in this Pasik is going to be a bridge word, a Gezer Shava, to all these other Pasukim, all these other types of damages that have the word Yishalem. Shur, Bor, Mabe, Metame, Medame, Menasech, Mosa Mefago, Hever, Shomer Chinam, all the Shomrim and all the Ganavim and the Gazlanim. So the, that same word is found in all these Pesukim, so the information then of Metav is going to now go from there to all these other places that say the word Yishalim. Now in this Pasuk of Shur, there's another link. It says, when a short damage is, Shalem Yishalem Shur Tachas HaShur. So there's going to be a bridge from the Shalem to Tachas, and that's going to go down to these four different types of damages. Ayin Tachas Ayin, when a man damages a man, it says the word Tachas, so when a move he's going to pay back with the best of his land. Adim uh, Zamamim, when Adim uh, a lie and, uh, about an event that someone had and caused him a loss, then they're going to have to also pay back. They're going to have to be done with Metav, um, and then Tsar and Onus also. So, th so that link, the word Tachas is found in the Zikin and also in in uh, the Zikin. That's a uh, man damaging another man, and it's also found in Tsar. And he explains that. Adam Zomamin is, is a subcategory of man damaging, and Onus is a subcategory of Tsar, so it goes down to Onus and Mephata also have to pay. And finally, from this link in Onus, which puts together Benosan Ha'isha Shochev Yimala Abiha Na'ar Chameshim Kesev Tachas Hashayinu. So from that Kesev, the link is going to go from Tachas to Kesev and down to Mephata and Mosi Shemra. And from this Nasan, it's going to go to Ripui and to Shevis. So the, the, the reason why I bring this is to show that there are unique processes that the Torah uses in order to decode its information and to move information from one place to the next. Processes that can only be done through a Masara. As in this case. Okay. Here I just diagrammed the uh, the rule of Metav, which started in Shorn Regal, and how the word Yeshalem went to these four, and how these two were subcategories of that, and how from this bridging Pasuk it went to Tacha, and from Tachas it bridged to the Sinus and Kesev, and how these were all subcategories of those. Okay. Again, it has to be studied carefully, but the point only is to demonstrate the internal system that the Torah has in order to communicate its information. Now, that's the level of Peshat, transferring information, but there's actually four levels that the Torah exists on, Peshat, Remesh, Drush, and Sod. 
said Peshat is the literal understanding of the text, which is we're going to be use, using it to understand the, the basic meaning and the halacha, but there's also Ramazim, which uh, allude uh, to other parts or to other events. There's Drush, which is, explains more the the, the the moral aspects or lessons to be derived from the text, and then there's the mystical level of Sod. Okay, so we're we're going to stop at this point. But what I'd like to do in the next class, and that'll be just one more class like this, is basically to show <coughs> the six levels that have to be uh, delved into to understand any particular. Um, halacha clearly, and then we're going to give an example this Gemara of Meitav, and we're going to Bezut Hashem Blineda, go through each one of the levels from the mission from the from the Torah to the Mishnah to the Gemara, the Rishonim, the post scheme into the Achronim, to the Rosh Hashivas. We're going to go down the line, and we're going to see ex exactly what is done in each stage in this one particular example, so we can clearly see at least in one place how the information is uh, uh, through this method of both Torah systems and simple logical systems, and how the the system actually works in one live example. That's what we're going to do, and hopefully we'll be pulling in what we learned from these various svarim to make the uh, investigation as clear as possible. Okay, so we'll, we'll stop here now.